When scientists discovered natural gas under this field in the 1990s, most of the world's big energy companies wanted the contract. So too did a company few people had ever heard of, NICO. Prior to coming to Bangladesh, NICO was a junior exploration company with business only in India. But then Bangladesh's government awarded NICO the Tangartilla contract. It did so without holding an open bid, a breach of normal procedures. Many immediately questioned NICO's deal. So NICO is not uh, a clean name in Bangladesh. Cherry Khan, a reporter at Bangladesh's Daily Star newspaper, has been investigating NICO for years. He's continued to question whether NICO's deal was crooked, although any allegations of corruption have never been proven. They don't have adequate resource, they didn't have adequate experience, and Bangladesh, of all things, didn't uh, want any uh, company that doesn't have enough experience. So after NICO failed to get uh, anything out of the second round block bidding, which is an open and competitive bid, they uh, uh, resorted to lobbying. And let's say they, they were looking for something that was not uh, transparent, uh, but uh, they, that would surely give them something. By 2005, the company put up this gas extraction plant in the middle of the village. But soon after the company started work, a catastrophe struck. While drilling, the company caused an explosion that blew up the field, leaving a bomb-sized crater. Luckily, no one was killed. The school closed for weeks while Nyko tried to put out the fire. But while trying to contain it, the company set off another explosion. The fires actually burned for weeks, destroying most of the village and forcing thousands of people to evacuate. Tens of millions of dollars of gas were destroyed. After the second blowout, Mamadou Rahman was brought in as a leading energy official to clean up the mess. What did, what, well, let's start with the blowout. Did you determine it was Michael's fault? Yes. Uh, at least on the second blowout, it was determined it was a Nyko's fault because they're probably, they're technically, they were not doing the right thing, you know. Meaning? Meaning, you know, I mean, this, this is highly technical. Let me tell you, I mean, uh, when you try to do some relief oil uh, operation, you have to start from, a f from quite a distance so that you avoid hitting the pocket gas. And if you hit the pocket gas while drilling, there is a possibility of the second blowout. But what NICO people did, they tried to seal up the first blowout from, very, from adjacent to the first blowout. Four years later, villagers in Tangratilla are still living with the consequences of NICO's accident. Mohammed Latif, a farmer whose house was adjacent to the gas plant, says his children have never been the same. Latif and other villagers took me to this pond where gas is still seeping from the ground. You can smell the yes, gas yeah, coming yeah. up. Yeah, something, something is coming out of these holes. Since the Tangratilla blowout, the company has paid compensation to the victims. But to this day, no one knows the environmental and health impact of the explosion. In Tangratilla, I tried to speak with Nyko's representative, but he refused, and no one else from the company would talk to me. Today, what began as an audacious play for a gas field has turned into a financial nightmare for Nyko. Tied up in litigation, the company has lost millions of dollars due to court fees, compensation claims, and lost revenue. The company's foreign executives have largely picked up and gone. What they've left behind as a name synonymous with environmental disaster. And this plant, which lays idle, its equipment rusting in the sun. But the school sits just a few meters from the explosion. <laughs> 